dusty out there? She <laughs> ready for the Daytona 500 or what? everybody it's race day got the super truck here got to put the front on it and put some fuel in it get it on the trailer and head to the track Chris is on his way he's doing uh doing the tow duties today with his Duramax again so looking for some good racing it's gonna be televised on dirtoval.com or dirtovaltv.com or something so this will be the the first race I've ever had televised which would be kind of cool um, no fans in the stands unfortunately <laughs> Alright, so I just got the float set where I want them. Sounds pretty good. It sounds better than my other carburetor. I like that a lot better. It's more responsive. So, hopefully that equivalates some speed on the track. These things are a little bit dirty. Time for some new rags. Much better. Ready to go racing now. Alright, that's Chris. Over there. How's it going? I'm Ryan, it's Trezian Racing, and it's finally race day. About to load this thing up and go to the track. Got the shoes foot out there. Johnny here, he just got to the track. Yeah, had, a, had a minor uh, issue here on the side of the freeway. But Look at that tire blew. It didn't just go down, it blew. And you got plenty of tread on there too. It wasn't like it was bald or nothing. No, oh, no. Shit. Crazy. But at least you made it safe. Four seasons on that. It's nice when you have a whole trailer full of tools and a compressor and stuff to get it all working and fixed. <laughs> yeah, this is Schwab Jr. here. I yeah. mean, Schwab couldn't have done any more. Mobile, mobile uh, Les Schwab right here. <laughs> the only part was that the damn generator didn't kick in, so I couldn't get the air pump going. Is that it right there, that yellow one? Yeah, yeah. All right, we're here at staging. Gotta check my safety equipment. Johnny's in front of me. I wanna go over right now and get it all checked out. Make sure I'm good to go to race. Our truck's out there watering. This is a. This is not a piece of mud. This is a rock. All kinds of rocks out here. Look at that. Looks like you're at the beach with a bunch of seashells lying around. That looks nice though. It's kind of like, uh, oh, there you go. I don't know if you can hear us up here because it's so windy, but we just hot lap slash mud packed. It was actually mud packing that turned into hot lap for us, which I don't think we should have gone out that early because it was just way too soupy. It was way too snotty out there. And guys were running all the way up into the wall and stuff. So I pulled off personally. I didn't even take any green flags. I just did the mud packing. You went out there though. Yeah, I, it was like it was like it was inconsistent. There was you know spots of spots. Uh, so I was trying to find a happy place, but I never did. So I, I didn't push it at all. Yeah, uh, they uh, there's a quite a bit of wind going on out there, and they uh, are trying to counteract that with a whole bunch of water on the track so it doesn't go dry and get dusty. But uh, it's 
just after hot laps, Ma just went out there and it's already kicking out a bunch of, uh, a bunch of dust, so I'm thinking it's going dry. Alright, got Dad here with the mask on. Hey there. How's it going? Chris, Mikey, I don't know where Olivia is, she's filming or something, Dalton. I'm going to try something out for the heat race here. I'm going to try something different. I normally go to a certain setup here at Antioch, but I'm going to give this a shot. Something to do on the right rear, so hopefully it works. If not, I'll be in the back. Skinny's Automotive, Cram McCall Machine Shop, Ryan Smith, Motorsports, a Motzinger chassis, three-time pro stock champ, getting titles at the old Pearsonville Speedway and Route 66 Raceway in Victorville. Out of corner number four, green flag in the air, and we're underway. Brent Lawrence and Jerry Bartlett up front. It's going to be Lawrence with the initial advantage as a three-car fight for third ensues. And the race for the lead has not cooled down whatsoever. Brent Lawrence will lead lap number one as Jerry Bartlett looking to the inside, trying to thread the needle down below Lawrence. It's going to be Bartlett. Second and third place drivers nearly going three wide in turn number one. And now the fight for position number three has been renewed this time. It's going to be a matchup between Chris Smith and the 3D and the 4T of Brent Lawrence. Lawrence trying to keep back Chris Smith for the final transfer position. Oh. checked out I was gonna start ninth and they would transfer nine to be made but they they wiped that off so we're, I'm gonna start dead last in the main you're starting where 
Middle pack uh, somewhere. Middle pack, seventh row. <laughs> so we're gonna try our best to get to the front. That we're not broken. Yeah. All right, so about to go out for the main. We threw the kitchen sink at it. Oh hell yeah. Changed all kinds of stuff. So starting dead last of the main. 22 cars, 20 laps. Hope it goes well. We'll see.
pile to move into fourth, and while he's happy, he's going to get into third as he passes Chris Smith in the 3D. Way high on a high scary side, Ryan Terrazian in corner number 12, trying to crack the nut, which is the top five for the first time. And he would be within the top five this evening if he could get past Matt Kyle in the black and red 55 entry. Bottling up a little bit of fire as Blake Kaufman trying to put some distance behind him. All right, 17 down and three to go. Don't forget we've got the IMCA modified feature coming up next. The Tri-State Pro Stop Series. Going to get underway. When they exit court number four this time, five. The Jim Freeman and the 99 back in the top five, running in fifth. Decent restart for the 3D of Chris Smith as he's trying to put in a late race bid to pick up the victory in this one. James Flowers, the 0 4 point in the end. <gasps> All right, let me show you the aftermath here. Started uh, 19th overall, 20 laps, and uh, get the nose clean. See that uh, jump. Got the body bent up a little bit. Rear bumper is gone, but luckily the rear clip's not bent at all. I got up in the fourth at one point, but I think I finished seventh. So I ran out of tire. Unfortunately, this left rear tire pretty much went full drag race sling. There's no edge at all on this thing, so. Would have had a little more tire, who knows where I'd ended up, but it was a fun night. Stayed out of trouble for the most part. Keep on grinding and get it faster. Record it, yeah. Yeah, I'm already coming, guys. <laughs> um, sir, would you like to say anything about the race? <laughs> I'm so annoying. What? I said, sir, would you like to say anything about the race? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Like Chris has been here. Uh -oh. It's a chimney boy. There's another one. All right, so how I said at Antioch, we found all those boulders and rocks in the track. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently my filmer here, Miss Hollywood, <laughs> Miss Hollywood, took a rock <laughs> in my main event to the leg. It hurt so much. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Look at that. It didn't come off my car, but it flew off no, her leg and then hit Eric. I literally Eric. was filming and I go... <laughs> Alright, here we are the day after, Sunday morning. I figured I'd show you guys in the daylight what this looks like a little better. <clears throat> so, definitely had some body damage in the right rear, but uh, besides that, really kept the car pretty clean, um, out of any trouble. This rear bumper is going to have to get replaced. Uh, I don't have the capabilities to do these mandrel bends, and I really don't want to try to make a 90 degree angle with this uh, tube bender right here. It's not that great, and uh, I don't think it'll be that strong, so I'm going to have to give me somebody to make this rear bumper. Um, 
And as you guys can see, the body has taken quite a beating over the years. Uh, it's been through one too many races. So I'm not exactly sure what my game plan is now. I definitely got to get my rubber situation figured out. Um, as you guys saw, this this guy's totally bald. Um, so let me give you a little uh, insight of what happened in the race. I started 19th in the back. Uh, I rolled around the bottom the whole time, um, at least for the first half of the race, trying to just stay there um, and pick them off one by one. Wasn't going really anywhere with that. Um, I, I got a couple spots, but it really wasn't making up any ground. The car was not that good on the, on the bottom. Um, I just couldn't get off the corner with any kind of traction. Um, I would just spin the tires no matter where I was at on the bottom. So it wasn't working too well. So I said, all right, well, I'm gonna try something out here. I went to the top and I found something. Um, the top felt really good on exit and I was get, able to get a lot of speed um, off the corner, especially in turn four. One and two didn't really have much up there on top to, to get a hold of. So that was not really where I wanted to be, but the problem was everybody was on the bottom. So I figured I would go to the top and hopefully catch a break. Maybe somebody gets a pile up on the bottom. I'll pass a bunch of cars. Didn't really work out that way, but I was able to pass quite a bit of cars on the top. Um, and I got up to fourth by, um, what there was, that was lap 17, I was in fourth. Three to go. Uh, we had a, a late race, late race caution. So uh, started out in fourth, single file restart. And even though I was on the top, the car just did not fire off. Uh, I spun the tires on the, on the start and I knew something was up. Uh, the car was sliding a lot more than it had uh, the, in the previous part of the race and uh, ended up getting into uh, turn three, like I normally would be on the top, you know, throw it in there pretty hard and it just slid all the way up to the wall. And luckily the bumper took most of the beating. Um, I don't know how I did this, but I backed the car up into the wall, perpendicular to the wall. You know, I didn't hit it on the side here, which would have probably knocked the uh, rear clip in. So I got pretty thankful. There was a pretty hard lick, but I just knew something was up. So I ended up dropping back to seventh. And that's where I finished. And then afterwards looking at the tires, I figured that was probably what it was. No, no uh, tread left at all to uh, get rid of any of that dust on the track. So um, there's a big old chunk taken out of the inside portion of this tire. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, so I think I ran over something out there in the track. But yeah, that one lost all the tire pressure. And the funny thing is, is this left front was the one that would go down every night. It would never hold any air. And then uh, an old timer told me that if you try some tire shine on the uh, sidewalls, because it was weeping through the sidewalls, you could see air bubbles coming out when I would uh, spray them down. So I tried that out, and this is the only one that really held air that well. This one held air good, but that was already low to begin with. But <clears throat> definitely gonna have to get my tire situation figured out. The carburetor and motor ran great. Um, so pretty happy with that. I thought maybe I'd have to work out some bugs in that carburetor, seeing it was sitting all this time, but it wasn't the case. So I'm gonna get a game plan here pretty soon on what all I need to do. Uh, so you guys stay tuned for any updates. Um, maybe a track that might be running us here pretty soon. Um, so y'all make sure that you subscribe to the channel, share it. Um, like, comment, interact, tell me where you're watching from, all that good stuff. So, like I said, you keep your eyes open for a video coming out here pretty soon when we get this car in here and get a better look at it and figure out what the game plan is here in the future. So thanks for watching, guys. I'm out of here.